So let's chat about the job hunt process as a new grad. Basically how interviews are structured is you do a phone screening with HR. If you pass that, they give your resume to the hiring manager to carry out the actual interview. In my case, as a new grad out of school, one hospital I interviewed with was a panel that consisted of the lab director, the lab manager, and the lab technical supervisors. Two other hospitals, I just interviewed with the lab managers. I did vlog this experience of interviewing as a new grad if you're interested, so check out the linky. The questions I had on these interviews were mainly seeing if I was a good fit for the specific hospital. Coming out of school, they know that you don't have laboratory experience. So it's probably going to be a bunch of behavioral questions and questions centered around your clinical rotations. They asked me what analyzers did I use in clinicals, how much did I learn as far as maintenance and QC goes, and what kind of bench testing did I get to do. This information is important for hiring decisions because these were things they were going to have to teach me as a new grad. So they were just seeing where I was as far as beginning training goes. Then all the other questions were personality based. You can expect questions to determine how you would work in a team setting. It is a team based job where the job does involve us getting along with other professionals in and outside the lab. Hiring managers are seeing if you will fit in with the lab staff and the culture. So they want to see that you can be a team player. Questions will be centered around how do you handle conflict? How do you handle critique and feedback? And what is your response to high stress situations? And you know, questions similar to these to see how you will respond to times of stress. So maybe be prepared for questions that may hint at your personality. I've definitely been asked about my strengths and weaknesses on every single interview. I know I'm pretty level-headed on the exterior. I tend to think fast, I'm very organized, and I can multitask with no problem. And I pay close attention to detail, so I play up these strengths. Now my weakness, on the other hand, is that I'm very quiet. But I have worked at communicating effectively with others through school and jobs that I've had previously. That is how I word my weakness, because there's nothing wrong with being quiet. But depending on the lab's culture, some labs may welcome this trait and others may not. I know the stigma is that the lab is full of shy, non-talkative introverted people. Do not think for a second that every lab is full of introverts. It's a mix of everything. I've honestly met way more extroverts and big personalities in the lab to the point where I have been singled out to every lab that I've gone to now, even as a student, because I don't talk enough to the point that it makes people uncomfortable. But it is what it is, that's just me. <laughs> you know, my professional self has absolutely no problem speaking up and advocating when needed. I just generally don't have a lot to say for conversations, especially when I'm first starting to get to know people and coworkers and stuff. So if you're like this as well, don't feel bad. For one, I don't feel bad. I can't help how people perceive my quietness. So along the way, I've been asked some questions that caught me off guard. I wanted to share them with you because they stood out to me the most. One hospital asked me, they were like, uh, what do you know about this health system? And they were trying to see if I at least did some research into this job for the company that I say I want to work for on this interview. And another question was, how did I end up learning about the medical laboratory field? For this one, kind of took me by surprise just because my perception of leadership is that they don't necessarily care <laughs> but we're not getting into that <laughs> the next question was how do i feel about the analyzers that i've worked with in clinical rotations this was surprising to me at the time because they were asking specifically about the roche cobas since that was the primary analyzer that i worked with in clinicals at this hospital also had and, you know people tend to have a negative connotation to say the least about roche but i personally prefer it but it's also all I know. I've worked with a few different models and they don't really give me too many crazy issues unlike the things that I've heard from others. So I also only know OrthoVision for blood bank. I just don't like that it can be loud if you don't have the silencer, but it was just different to be asked about my opinion of analyzers. The next question was what are three good medical laboratory scientist characteristics? I think I said something along the lines of accountability, integrity, and paying attention to detail, which I definitely do hold these in high regard now that I have work experience. And another question was, why do you want this job? Obviously because I want to get paid, but <laughs> for real. I personally only apply to jobs if it's certain skills or experience that I'm seeking. I've always been that way. So I generally answer this question by saying that I see this job as providing me with a challenging environment with a lot of room to learn and grow, which as a new grad was definitely the environment that I wanted to start my career in. And this question is 
where do you see yourself in two to five years? I have gotten this question from every single interview that I've done for a laboratory job. And I think they're gauging at how long you will stay if you accept the position. I answer this by saying that I see myself becoming proficient within a year and working on building my skill set within two to five years. And within that time, I plan to earn my master's degree, which is true. There's no lies told. <laughs> But I'm not about to hint, if an opportunity arises, I'm gonna go build that expertise somewhere else, you know. They're gonna ask you all kinds of questions, but an interview is not one-sided at all. I highly suggest that you get a list of questions to ask during your interview. I actually have my go-to list now, and I'm gonna share it with you for the questions that I ask employers when I'm interviewing. If they didn't tell me already, I ask what analyzer did it use. If it's a lighthearted interview, I throw in a quick one to ask what their likes and dislikes are about the analyzers. And luckily, they've been pretty honest, whether it goes down a lot or if it has a lot of maintenance or it's kind of old and you know, stuff like that. It's nice to know so that you can be prepared for the situation if you decide on accepting the job or not. And as a new grad, if you are applying to generalist jobs, you can ask what specific departments will you be working I did this for jobs that I was interviewing for as a new grad because I wanted to be trained in all areas. There was no compromise on that. And so one hospital, a generalist only worked core lab. So hematology, coagulation, chemistry, urinalysis, and body fluids. Another hospital, a generalist was core lab and blood bank. And the hospital that I ultimately took a job with was core lab, blood bank, and micro, which was my goal. So ask that to clarify what is a generalist, especially if you are like me and just are seeking as much experience as possible. As a new grad, especially if you are not familiar with how a hospital laboratory is ran, you can ask about the potential of having support staff. I have not worked in a lab that didn't have lab support through phlebotomist and lab assistants. So if a hospital does not have this, you may be required to go draw blood from patients in assessing your samples yourself. To me, that's a no, but you might want that direct patient care experience. So that is definitely a question to be asked as well. I am also sure to ask, what is the training process? Every facility answers this differently, so I follow it up with what is the average new hire struggle with the most? For whatever reason, this is my red flag question, because like I said earlier, I seek jobs to learn new skills. So I need to know that they will prioritize training and how well do they guide their new hires to support them in the process? And how much are they actually paying attention? My current job, I asked this and he was 100% right that the hardest part was learning the LIS. And that was true because it was a big adjustment for me coming from SunQuest to... So yeah, my priority is to learn. So I'm gonna ask this question every time because some employers don't have good training processes. I don't know, I guess I'm also gauging if they expect me to be thrown to the wolves and fend for myself. Um, other things I asked about were, do they support us with continuing education? For certification, we need to get like 30 CE credit hours every few years. My hospital systems that I've worked for do pay for that. So that is what I consider support. <laughs> if you wanna go back to school, you can ask that as well. Most hospitals do help you in the form of paying for tuition reimbursement or even partnerships with schools for discounts on tuition, which is nice too. Um, I think this next question is more for developing professionals than new grads, but I have also asked, are there opportunities outside of the bench to develop professionally? I ask this because I want to gain skills. That's my motivation. I want to learn. And bench skills only go so far sometimes. So things like precepting and assisting with side projects, assisting with validations or correlations and getting onto committees and attending conferences all help with learning, especially if you want to do leadership later on in your career. So I don't know if I want to do leadership, but I definitely want to do something besides work the bench in the future. And I also have noticed that I hate feeling like a body on the schedule. So I personally want to take a job where my potential leaders care about helping techs develop professionally, especially for me because I have interest in things like quality and analytics, so a workplace that can help me get these skills is valuable to me. You might not care about those things. Some people only want to come in and work the bench and clock out. They don't want any extra responsibilities, and that's okay. So if that is you, you should also ask this question because you might not know that you're taking on a job that requires you to do extra responsibilities. Take on it is to just figure out your priorities and frame your questions to interviewers around that. If I've gotten to the end of the interview and I want the job, I ask something along the lines of, is there any reason you wouldn't hire me for this position? It makes them tell me to my face why they might reject me. And it gives me a chance to rebuttal it versus just getting a generic rejection email. So my first job, 
uh, that I got, they just said that it was because I was a new grad and I had no experience. My current job was that I had no experience in microbiology for plate reading. And so I rebuttaled both of these with that I'm a fast learner and very persistent until I get it. So yeah, that's a risky question depending on the interviewer, but it's one that I'm going to ask every time just because if I don't get this job, I need to know how I can improve for the next interview, you know? <laughs>